So, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, now you've all clapped and cheered. My horse is super hot. So, uh, I would like to try and start from the beginning, which is what everybody really doesn't get to see behind the scenes. And uh, that's the basics, paces of these horses. And what you see in the end result and in the arena is all years and years of training. And I'm starting here just by stretching the horse and uh, trying to make him relaxed and supple. And it's a bit like gymnastics with the horse dressage. Uh, you wouldn't expect a gymnastics person to just go and start their workout. They do a nice stretch and a warm-up. And that's very important with these dressage horses that we work on making them more supple and loose. And we warm up basically the, the, the necks and their backs and we get them as loose as possible before we ask them to get you know, more and more work into their bodies. Because if they're not loose at the beginning, they're not going to be loose and supple in their proper work. So, and that's so interesting, Charlotte, because I can remember in my first Olympics watching um, Edwin Moses and some of the other athletes, and it didn't matter what sport, you would see these athletes loosen up. They would do all these loosening exercises before they either ran and did the vaults or did whatever it was was going to be their real competitive sport. Yeah, and so my job as a rider is to make him supple and most people you know horses and riders have a stronger side and or a weaker side so it's my job to try and get the horse as even as possible in the contact so my aid at the moment for this stretching work is that my hands are very low and wide. So what I'm trying to do is get this part of the horse's neck and the base here to be as low and long and as stretched as possible so that then he, behind the saddle, lifts his back and these muscles here start to move. And when I can feel him do that, like now he's starting to relax so it's feeling better in my hand and in my seat, then I know he's starting to use himself in the right way. So now I'll just go into the canter, so I'll do the same. And most, you know, every horse, for our routine of the horses, we do. Well, I don't know what's happening. We're having but a little bit of sound problems as you, as you can. That's better now, I think. Can we get that any better, guys? Maybe put the mic a little closer to your mouth and see if that helps. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. So we have a routine with our horses that we do at least, all our horses start with a hack up the road. So they do a 10, 15 minute walk up on the road. So they just loosen up. And then we have a very good team behind us. So. Some of the other girls, oh, obviously, we don't have time to uh, stretch. Between me and Carl stretch all the horses. But we start them like this for at least 20 minutes. And um, it's really important to do this because without this work, and I know you guys probably all look at it and think, oh, it's quite boring, but this is the foundations. It's like building a house. If you have bad foundations, you're going to have a bad house. If you have bad basics on a horse, whether it's four to Grand Prix, four years old all the way up, you're going to run into problems. So it is really important to get all these basics, whether it's just walk, trot, canter, and hundreds of transitions. 
And you know what I love just now? You saw that he made a little mistake the first time with the flying change. And so did you notice how quickly Charlotte corrected that, took the horse back, got the lead again, and then did the flying change again? It's so important to recognize that there's nothing wrong with making mistakes. A matter of fact, mistakes is how you learn to do things correctly. But what is wrong is if you have a mistake and then it is uncorrected by the rider. And so she's so wise. So watch even the things that don't go well and you'll learn something from how Charlotte reacts to those, especially with a horse that's not her own and that's new to her. So exactly right. I do actually do things without realizing I do it. So <laughs> Robert's just pointed that out and I didn't realize. But yeah, it's all about repetition. Dressage is repetition, correction, and being, you know, strong with yourself but to not let bad habits happen. So being on top of every little thing. If you make bad transitions at home just because you're lazy or you're not really thinking about it, you're going to make bad transitions in the arena and then you go, oh, well, he did this or, oh, he did that. But that's because you allow him in the first place to make all those mistakes. And then when it comes to a test and you've got to do it and you get a mark for it and you do it badly, then we all seem to moan. I wonder why. I love that. It's about practicing with a work ethic that says practice perfectly at home every day. And also that in Malcolm Gladwell's book, he writes about 10,000 hours of practicing. It takes 10,000 hours of practicing, he says, to become very good at something, such as Bill Gates with computers. But I take it a step further and say it's not just 10,000 hours of practicing, because there are people that practice 10,000 hours and never do great things. The difference is practicing under great supervision, such that you learn what Charlotte just did reflexively, and that is, if something goes wrong, you repeat and you make sure that the thing that went wrong goes right, and then you move along. So I've just done the warm-up, and um, he's not as relaxed, obviously, as he normally would be at home. He's in a new surrounding. He's got quite a lot to take on. So probably the best stretching work I will get out of this horse is probably the end of the session. And that's not anything to worry about. As long as m he finishes in a good way, you know, it's very important that you work with the horse, not against the horse. And that I give him the confidence that if he's afraid of something, that I can reassure him and be positive and to say, no, it's okay. And then he trusts me and uh, he carries on rather than being afraid of it. And then I can't get him near it.